Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to solve the square one. So the square one is a really fun puzzle and it's one of my favorite events to compete in. I've noticed that many cubers can't solve their square ones, either because they haven't tried or they couldn't find a good tutorial. If you're wondering where I learned how to solve it, I'll link the video on screen right now as well as in the description below. I personally think that's a pretty good tutorial and quick disclaimer, I got most of the algorithms I'm going to be using in this video from there. So nothing I'm showing in this video is actually my own. I'm just here to offer another video option for anyone who wants to learn how to solve it. So the first thing you need to do to solve one of these is to get one. If you don't have a square one, I very strongly recommend the Chi, uh, which is this one right on the right. As of the time of this upload, the Chi square one is pretty much the only good one out there. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can pick one up. If you have some other brands like this Calvin's here or a Cube Twist or something like that, you might get kind of frustrated with solving it, and I'd strongly recommend picking up a Chi, but if you can't get one for whatever reason, any square one is fine to learn on. But for now, let's get rid of this. So the method I'm going to be teaching in this video is the Lars Vandenberg method, which consists of six steps. The first step is cube shape, which is where you get the square one back to a cube. The next step is corner orientation, where you get the big corner pieces on their proper layers. The next step is edge orientation, where you get the smaller edge pieces on their proper layers. Then corner permutation, where you permute the corners on each layer. Edge permutation, where you permute the edges on each layer. And finally, parity, which will allow you to finish up edge permutation and solve the cube. So before we get into the actual method, you do need to learn basic notation. So this notation is actually a little different from on a 3x3 or any other standard puzzle. So it takes a while to get the hang of it, but you definitely will over time. So on square one, you can only turn the top and bottom layers as well as doing these moves, which in notation are referred to as slashes. On the top and bottom layers, edges, these small pieces right here, are worth one, and corners, the big pieces, are worth two. To understand what I mean, hold your square one with the largest piece on the middle layer on the right side, which is how you'll hold it for the entire solve anyway. And from there, count each piece that passes this line right here. So to do a full 360 degree rotation on the top layer, we would do it like this. So this is one for the edge, plus 2 is 3 for that corner, plus 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7, plus 2 is 9, plus 1 is 10, and finally plus 2 is 12. So on any layer, you're going to count to 12 to do a 360 degree rotation. There are also negative moves, which are the same exact thing, it's just counterclockwise. So it would be like negative 2, negative 3, negative 5, negative 6, negative 8, negative 9, negative 11, and negative 12. So similarly to on a 3x3, three three, it just pretends you're facing the side that you're talking about. So if you say to do a negative move on the bottom side, that would be this way, because that's counterclockwise down here. Meanwhile, on the top side, it would be this way, because that's counterclockwise up here. So those numbers I just taught you, when you're reading notation, you'll see those numbers written in parentheses separated by a comma, like this. So the first number represents the amount you turn the top layer, and the second represents the amount you turn the bottom. So in this case, it's negative 5, comma 3. Uh, so you would do on the top layer, negative 2, negative 3, negative 5, and then on the bottom layer, it's 2, 3, like that. Okay, so now that you understand notation, we're going to start off the solve with cube shape. So cube shape is sort of intuitive, similarly to how cross is on the 3x3. Three three. Pretty much your first goal for cube shape is to get all eight edges connected to each other on the top layer. So personally, I would start looking at these three edges. Keep in mind, you always want to have this uh, long piece on the right side, so you don't really want to flip it over like this, because that's really awkward to hold. But I would start with these three, and I would just try by manipulating the cube and maybe even doing some random turns to get as many pieces up here as I can. So I currently have four. Uh, now it would appear that I have these two, I can bring that up. So now I have five. So pretty much one of the points of this is to experiment and see what you can do. Here, I was able to bring this down to connect it with that. Move this over, bring this over, and then connect that so you get six. Now once you have six, there are a few different cases you can get. This is the hardest one to grasp on your own, it's the L. And the way you solve that is by turning it this way, 
and then bringing the L up, so then you turn it into a line here, sort of. And from there, you have these two down here. So then you're able to bring it back to having all six. Move those six to their own side, and then bring the line up. And then you have all eight. So your goal for the first part of cube shape is to get all eight edges on top, two corners on top, and then six corners on the bottom. From here, you can hold the puzzle in this position and apply the following algorithm. So it's slash, negative two, negative four, slash, negative one, negative two, slash, negative three, negative three, slash. And now your cube should look like this. Don't worry about it if your cube looks more like this with the equator not completely solved, that'll be fixed at the end. As long as you have the top and the bottom as squares, then you're good. The next step is corner orientation, which is also pretty intuitive. I know that when you have red in front and blue on the left, yellow is going to be on top, so that's what I'm going to try to do. A quick tip for preserving your cube shape while you do this step is to misalign just one layer before you do any turns, and that way you'll keep your cube shape. Otherwise, if you try to do this, you'll end up with something like this, and then you'll just mess up your cube shape. I'm going to try to get all four corners on the top to be yellow. So currently I have these two. The best thing to do is sort of to get uh, the corners into lines, and once you have them into two lines, then you can just connect the lines, and then you have all four. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to misalign this layer, bring this corner up, and then I have this line of corners right here. Down here I also have a line of corners, so I'm going to misalign the top layer, bring that up, and then realign it, and then as you can see we have all four corners. Honestly, you could probably just do a bunch of random turns and you'd eventually get it. It's pretty simple and self-explanatory, but I'll show you another example just in case. So in this case, we have diagonal on the bottom and a line on the top, adjacent. So what I would do here is misalign the bottom layer, bring this corner up, then move this corner over like this. So it's down here, and when we bring this back down, they'll match up and make a line. Then we can misalign it again, bring it up, then we have all four corners solved. Don't worry about the edges, that's our next step. Okay, so now we're gonna try to get all the yellow edges on top. So currently, again, we have two, and two white edges. So the way we do this is, we put one of the unoriented edges on the right. So we already have that, this white one. And then on the bottom, we do the same thing. We put one of the unoriented edges on the right. It doesn't matter which one, we can do this one, or this one, or on the top it can be this one or this one, as long as it's on the right. From there, you apply this algorithm, and it'll swap these two edges, so then you'll have one less uh, pair of edges to deal with. So it's 1, 0, slash, 0, negative 3, slash, 0, negative 3, slash, negative 1, negative 1, slash, 1, 4, slash, 0, 3, slash. And then as you can see, we have three edges solved on the top and three on the bottom, or oriented rather. And now we'll move on to these next two. So it's the same exact thing. Put the unoriented edge on the right, and then same thing on the bottom. Make sure they're both on the right. So it's the same exact algorithm. It's one, zero, slash, zero, negative, three, slash, zero, negative, three, slash, negative, one, negative, one, slash, one, four, slash, zero, three, slash. And then as you can see, we have all the yellows on the top and all the whites on the bottom. So now we're done with both of the orientation steps. Okay, so our next goal is to permute the corners on both layers. So we're gonna start with the top layer, and first what you wanna do is look for a set of headlights. So headlights, they look like this on the bottom layer, pretty much two corners that are the same color facing the same way. So on the top layer, these two are not headlights, they're not the same color. These two aren't either, these two aren't, these two aren't. So we have no headlights. That's the worst case you can get. So the way you solve that is by just doing this algorithm from any position with any side in front, and then you'll reduce it to having one set of headlights. So the algorithm is slash three negative three, slash negative three zero, slash zero three, slash zero negative three, slash zero three, slash. And now let's look for a set of headlights. And here it is. So we have two headlights right there, or one set of headlights. And so what we do is we put them in the back, and we do that algorithm again. Slash three, negative three, slash negative three, zero, slash zero, three, slash zero, negative three, slash zero, three, and slash. And then you'll notice we have four sets of headlights. 
one on each side. From there, we have to get the, uh, the same thing, four headlights, on the bottom layer. So there are two ways you can get it so the bottom layer is on top. One is by physically rotating the cube, adjusting the middle layer so it looks like that, and then you have the bottom layer on top. But in some cases, like this, that's a little awkward because you have the big piece on the left, and it can be really awkward to do algorithms that way. So what I recommend you do if you don't want to risk having an awkward uh, to-do algorithm, I recommend you use this quick thing to switch the two layers, which is slash, six, six, slash. And then you have the white on top, yellow on the bottom. So from here, again, we look for headlights. So there are none here, none here, none here. And there are headlights here. So we put them in the back and do that algorithm. Like that. And then as you can see, we have four sets of headlights. So now don't forget to redo that algorithm to flip the two sides again. So it's slash, six, six, slash. So the second to last step is to permute the edges on both layers. So these four edges are not in their correct places, so we need to permute them. Neither are these four on the bottom. So one way to do this is by using an algorithm that swaps these two edges with each other, and also these two edges with each other. So what you do is you wanna set up two edges in the back that can swap. So here I notice uh, red and green. If they swap, red will be solved because it's between these two reds. Green won't be, but that's okay. We're still reducing it so we have less unsolved edges, so I'll put that in the back. On the bottom layer, I see these two. If these two swap, blue will be here, green will be here, so blue will be solved. This won't be, but once again, that's okay. So I'm gonna put that in the back. And the algorithm is negative two zero slash three zero slash negative one negative one slash negative two one slash. And then you can fix the top layer if you want. So you'll notice it had that effect. It solved the red side, solved the blue side. So then that's good. Now we want to do the same exact thing again. So for the last three edges, you want to think ahead a little more. So if we swap these two, yes, orange will be solved and blue will be unsolved with the green. So it seems fine. But then we'll end up with two unsolved opposite edges, which is not what our algorithm does. So we want to end up with two unsolved adjacent edges using our algorithm. So the way we do that is, if we swap these two edges, then this will be solved, this won't be, and then these two will need to swap. So you do sort of need to think ahead a little bit, but it shouldn't be that hard. It takes a little time to get used to, and if you mess up, you can just redo the algorithm and you'll get back to where you were. So don't worry about it, just take an educated guess, and if it doesn't work out, then uh, undo the algorithm. So then on the bottom, you can see if we swap these two, this is solved and this won't be, and neither will this be. So then these two are adjacent, so that's good, so we'll put these two in the back, so those are the best two to swap. Now we'll do that algorithm again. Negative two, zero, slash, three, zero, slash, negative one, negative one, slash, negative two, one, slash. So now from here, as expected, we put these two in the back, and these two in the back, so they'll swap, and we do that algorithm. And now we have all of our edges solved on both layers. But DG cubes, what about the equator? Okay, so this is a really easy algorithm that you wanna to save to the end because some algorithms flip the equator, some don't. So you'll never know what you'll end up with at the end of the solve. In this case, we need to flip it. It's a super easy algorithm. Slash six zero, slash six zero, slash six zero. And then your square one is solved. Unless you have this. If you have this, you have parity, which you will get about in about 50% of your solves. Or if you're me at slow and steady spring 2016, in about 80% of your solves. So the parity algorithm is the longest algorithm you'll need to know for square one. And it swaps these two edges, and it also flips the equator. So this algorithm is super long, but you can do it. I believe in you. You got this. You're awesome. Okay. So the algorithm you need to know to do parity is slash negative three zero slash zero three slash zero negative three slash zero three slash two zero slash zero two slash negative two zero 
slash four zero slash zero negative two slash zero two slash negative one four slash zero negative three slash zero three. So that's a pretty long algorithm. So I'd recommend a good way to remember that is first you're starting off with, so it starts with a slash and then you have four threes. So there's one on the top that's a negative three and three on the bottom and they alternate positive, negative, positive. And then you have two twos or three twos rather, they alternate top and bottom. So it's positive on the top, positive on the bottom and then negative on the top. Then you kind of just have to remember there's a four and then two twos both on the bottom, but they alternate. So negative two, two. And then this is sort of like that four earlier, I guess, except first there's a negative one on top and then a four on the bottom, and then a slash. And then we finish it off with two more threes, both on the bottom, one negative, and then one positive. So, I mean, that's an okay way to remember it. Really the best way to remember it is through muscle memory like this. If you can execute it fast, you barely even remember the numbers and then you can just do it without even thinking. That's the best way to remember it. So just practice it a million times on your square one, get it into your memory, sing it to yourself as you go to sleep, sing it in the shower, sing it in the bathtub, sing it while you're making soup, sing it while you're eating soup, sing it while you're eating with your family or friends and annoy them and eventually it'll get into your head. So that's all you need to know to be able to solve the square one. Uh, I'll leave all the algorithms I mentioned in this video in the description below, and I'll have timestamps to all of the steps in the description. So if you forgot a certain step, you can just come back here and click on that timestamp. So if you're confused by anything, you can leave a comment below and I will try my best to answer it as quickly as I can. But before you ask any questions, just check the description because I might've updated it with something I forgot or something like that. Also, big shout out to the Cubologist who made the original video where I learned that I will also link in the description. It's also a great tutorial, so if you want to learn it from somebody who has a different voice than me, uh, you can do that as well. So in the near future, I'll be making a video on how to get a little faster with the method I just taught you. So some easier algorithms, tips and tricks, stuff like that. So be sure to stay on the lookout for that. If you want to get notified right away when it goes up, make sure to subscribe to my channel. But yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something new and I'll see you on my next video.